How's it going, everyone? My name is Michael SK, and welcome back to Katawa Shoujo. In the last episode, we saw that the festival had begun. Lily is quite busy, and she can't really uh, figure out where Panako is, because she's, you know, busy. So, that's what we're doing, figuring out where... Actually, no, we already found out where Hanako is. She was over at the, uh, the library. She being the shy type, she doesn't want to be around anyone, or I guess around a large crowd, which is what the festival is pulling in. So I guess we're just going to put Lily's mind at ease as she works at her booth by spending time with Hanako. I'm pretty sure that's where we're at right here. But uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's read on. I'm pretty sure we are now heading in the direction of Hanako's route. And if that is indeed the case, then I'm absolutely down for it. Which means once we're done with that, we can easily switch on over to Lily's route. And uh, then there'd just be two more routes to do. I have no idea how to get to, to Rin's, but I'm sure there'd be uh, a possibility if I go back through some some choices and stuff to get uh, what's-her-faces. I, I, I can never remember her name. It's the, it's the girl who can't speak. The deaf one. The noise of the festival is slightly louder inside the tea room but the breeze coming through the open window makes it worth it. Without thinking, I walk to the windowsill and inhale deeply. I sometimes forget how clean the air is here compared to back home. Do, would you like some tea? That would be great, thanks. It occurs to me that this is the first time I've been alone with Hanako without her trying to be somewhere else. Turning from the window, I watch as she makes a simple pot of tea and arranges some sandwiches onto a plate. Damn, this room really has it all. I've seen her do this before a number of times, but this time she seems slightly different. It's like she's... calm. Eventually she places the small tray on the table and pours two cups. The fresh scent of brewed tea mingles with the breeze, and for a second I feel like I'm the only one in the world. I think I know why you like this room now. Uh, I don't know what you mean. Well, there are quite a few people out there. But in here, it's like another world. You can pretend that there's no one around for miles. Y you're right. It's like the world has forgotten this room. And because of that, you can forget about the outside. That would be appealing in some cases. As far as I can tell, conventional bullying doesn't exist in this school. But then again, I haven't seen a single person talk to Hanako besides Lily. If you're ignored by the world, a place where you can forget its existence would hold a special appeal. That's a good point. It's like this world gives you some kind of complete freedom. Yeah. Say, do you play chess? Oh, fuck. Chess? I've played it a bit, I guess. I take it you've played before. A little. Without saying anything more, Hanako moves to one of the cupboards and digs out a small chess set. Do, do you want... Sure, why not? I cut her off, but she doesn't seem to mind it. Now, if I have to, if I have to, you know, actually make some choices here on how we play the chess game, we're going to have some problems. We arrange the pieces, and before long, we are sending pawns charging to their inevitable fates. I take my time and intently examine each move and its consequences. Nostalgia for the game taking second place to the matters at hand. For a time, or for a time, yeah. The game is a lengthy battle of attrition, but I spot an opening and tear a line in her defense. A few moves later, her king is cornered by several of my pieces. Checkmate. You're not bad at this, are you? An honest appraisal. Her technique is pretty good, but several times I was able to exploit her lack of prediction. I pick up a piece and examine it. It looks relatively new, yet worn for its age. I guess not. Does Lily play? The absence of Hanako's answer causes me to think about my question. Yeah, that, um... Yeah, well, I, I'm sure blind people can play chess. I mean, there's tiles, rows and columns that can be labeled with letters and numbers, so if you picture things in your head... Though if you're blind, I don't know how you would picture things. Okay, well, never mind. Uh, a bit. This is the first time I've played against someone other than her, or... Or? She cuts herself off abruptly, leaving the answer hanging in the air. Someone she knew before coming to Yamaku, maybe. Well then, I'm honored to have played against you. Uh, can we play again? 
She asks this, or she asks as if she were asking me to cut off my own hands. The spirit of competition's gotten into her? Sure, though don't expect me to go easy on you th this time. Not that I was before. She seems to appreciate the competitive tone. Same here. As we are setting up the pieces, there is a noise at the door. Ah, alright. You know, we're having a moment, but okay, come on in. Good afternoon. Lily. Oh, hey there, Lily. Are you finished? You both are here. Wonderful. At any rate, our teacher managed to round up some extra help, so I was able to leave. Have you been here since you left? Pretty much. We've just been playing a bit of chess. Would you like a cup of tea? Actually, I think it may be a good idea to go outside for a little while. The instant drop in Hanako's face shows her objection to this plan, even though she says nothing. I feel strangely compelled to voice what is plainly in view on her face, but Lily can't see. I... I kind of think that we should just stay here. Really? It's so crowded here that I was thinking we should leave the school and head for the local tea house. You mean the Shanghai? Of course. With everyone at the festival, it should be practically empty. Tea house? Oh, that's right. You probably don't know of it. There's a tea house not far from here, which we go to every so often. Sounds like a plan. Hanako, what do you think? Hanako jumps a little at being forced into the conversation, but at least she seems less distraught than before. If, if it's the Shanghai, I think it'll be nice. Well, then it's settled. Let's be on our way. Hanako and I rise from the table and our preempted chess game. Before I can do anything, Hanako has poured the pieces into a small container and placed the board away. Looks like we're ready now. Please lead on. Probably not the best idea, but Hanako moves to Lily's side and we venture onto the school's corridors. The pair leads me through a series of unfamiliar doors and we emerge on the side of the building opposite of the festival grounds. Insulated by the heavy stone of the building, the noise from the crowd has faded to a murmur. Strange. I thought that most people would be beginning to leave by now. They're probably here to view the fireworks. Fireworks? Yes, apparently the school puts on quite a show. A lot of people come from town just to watch them. Lily's decision to leave the school grounds seems to have made sense now. Hanako would have probably had a hard time with the whole town descending onto the school, or ascending, as the case may be. For the second time since arriving at Yamaku, I find myself walking down this road with Lily. Only now that I can barely hear the incessant noise of the festival, do I realize how loud it was. And I just saw that I got a notification on my phone, so that completely distracted me. I can hear my ears ringing slightly in the still evening air as they recover from the day's assault on them. Hanako clings to Lily, but still manages to guide her along the road. That, and avoiding the occasional gaze from curious pedestrians, appears to completely sap her constitution. She, ra she rarely raises her focus from the ground in front of her, nor does she utter a word. Lily, on the other hand, maintains her prim and proper persona, just as she does in school. It's obvious she purposely puts effort into her appearance, rather than hiding it as Hanako does. It's striking how different they are in their way of holding themselves outside of Yamaku's grounds. That said, it's obvious in both their cases that they do visibly change. Inside Yamaku, everyone is special, which negates their specialness of it. But once we venture outside the school gates, we are returned to the status of outsider and generic labels, especially when we are in a school uniform. It's like hanging a sign around your neck challenging people to figure out what is wrong with you. I'm surprised that so many of the students keep it on. Then again, with canes and wheelchairs common among the students, I guess it's not really that much of a giveaway. Or maybe I'm the only one that sees it as a uh, stigma? Maybe you get used to it after a time, like any other school uniform. The tea house seems fairly standard from the outside, just an ordinary building with typical signs decorating the entrance. It looks like the, t the type of place you'd walk by without a thought, just another generic cafe in a sea of thousands. If Hanako hadn't steered Lily into the entrance, I would have continued on down the road, 
without her without ever knowing that it existed excuse me inside the tea house it takes on a more traditional feel everything seems to have been made from the same lump of timber from the counter and benches to the high-backed booths around the walls but the most striking feature of the room is the lack of life i think i can faintly hear something bubbling away in the background but otherwise the room is silent without any direction we simply wait near the entrance politely obeying the please wait to be seated sign. Uh, is this place closed or something? Uh, Alright. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we have been here. I was thinking for a second, like, maybe there's a chance we've been here before. Now it's all coming back to me. We, we were here with, uh, with Emmy and her route, and we saw that the librarian is actually also a, a, a waitress here. Now it's all coming back to me. I don't know how it's coming back to me. It's been more than a year and this has kind of been at the back of my mind, but... <laughs> Alright. The sound of a chair falling over echoes throughout the empty room, and a head shoots up from inside a booth. I wasn't asleep, and welcome to the Shanghai. Yuoko, dressed in a pastel apron and clutching a menu, rushes to greet us. Her misaligned glasses and ruffled hair cast suspicion on her previous statement. But whether she was asleep or not isn't the first question that leaps to my mind. You work here now? What happened to the library? What? Lily? Hisao? Welcome to the Shanghai. Yuko, still waking up, jerks into a violent bow, dislodging her glasses in the process. Uh, my glasses. As I pick up her spectacles off the floor, Lily offers an explanation. Yuko works here part-time as well as the library. It's one of the reasons we like to come here. Yuko takes her glasses from my hands, shakily putting them back on. Yes, that's right. Thanks. Shall I show you to your table? There's no one else here, so you can choose your table and order whatever you like, but there may be a delay as I will have to make it myself. That's alright, Yuko. Just a pot of black tea and a plate of sandwiches will be fine. Right. I'll get right onto that. Yuko hurries off to the back of the cafe, leaving us still standing at the entrance. She pushes the swinging half doors open before realizing that she hasn't seated us. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Please sit wherever you like. I'll be right back. Following her advice, I lead Lily to the nearest booth as Hanako follows. As I begin to sit next to Lily, I realize how appropriate this place is for Hanako. The high-backed booths totally separate you from the rest of the room, and it doesn't look like it gets all that many customers. All the furnishings, from the cushions on the benches to the condiment holders, look dated but aren't overly worn. I wonder if Lily deliberately selects places like this to take Hanako. She seems like the type that would go to lengths to cater to Hanako's unique predicament. So Hisao, I didn't know you played chess. Well, not very well, but I do know how to play. I suppose the obvious question would be, who won? Lily's innocent smile makes me hesitate. I don't really want to look like I'm lording my victory over Hanako. Hisao did. Yes, but uh, not by much. Damn, saying that out loud makes me feel like I've done something terrible. Well done, Hisao. You've accomplished something I've only ever failed at. Uh, thanks. I haven't played in ages, so it felt good to play again. Yeah, it did. Aniko fidgets with her hair a little and looks away as she replies, but a small smile emerges. Ah! It's a little more extreme of a reaction than I expected, but still kind of cute in that Hanako way. It throws me off a little or it, it throws me a little off guard, and only Yuko's cataclysmic re-entry shocks me back into conversation. Are you alright there, Yuko? Do you need a hand? I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. I have to do this properly, it's my job. Concentration plays across her face while she stares at the tray in her hands, as if simply looking at its contents will hold them in place. Sadly, this doesn't prove all that effective. The cups and saucers slowly dance around, occasionally clattering as they collide with one another. Taking great care, Yuko sets the tray down on the table with only the sub the subtlest of crashes. There, see? Uh, well done. Thank you, Yuko. 
Yuko's head rockets downwards in her distinctive bow before answering. You're very welcome. Would you like to join us? There's something else I'd like to discuss about that recent order, if I may. Oh, that's right. Lily and Yuko were discussing a pile of books when I'd first met Hanako. Something about Lily helping with the Braille. Ah, yes. We didn't get the chance to go through them, did we? Yuko hastily sits down next to Hanako. Apparently, her dedication to this job only goes as far as her concentration. Once it is broken, she suddenly loses it. I'll be in the library tomorrow afternoon if you'd like to try again. That sounds perfect. I'll meet you there after classes. Um, Lily? Oh dear, that's right. Tomorrow is Monday. How could have I forgotten? I'm starting to feel a little left out of the loop here. Then again, that's to be expected. I have been here for barely a week, so it's impossible to know everyone's schedule. Well, perhaps we could come to some other agreement. Yuko, will you be in the library later in the week? Uh, maybe, but this is already overdue. And there are some... things I need. This might be a problem. Lily ponders for a second before discovering the answer. I wonder... Might we be able to enlist the help of another if need be? Uh, to do what? <laughs> you lost me quite, a, quite some time ago. Being volunteered for something without even having the slightest idea of what is going on isn't really my thing. And here I thought I had finally escaped the clutches of the student council and their repeated attempts to recruit me. Oh, I remember that. Damn, how could I forget? Oh, of course. The other day I was helping Yuko sort the new braille books in the library. But Hanako and I usually go shopping on Monday afternoons. It's quieter on that day than on weekends. Last week we couldn't go because I was busy with the festival. I managed to slip away later in the week, but Hanako couldn't make it. Well, since I can't read Braille, I'm assuming you'd like me to go shopping with Hanako? Correct. You were a great help to me the other day. I think I can handle that. Hanako, what do you think? If you wouldn't mind. Of course not. I'm still not familiar with all the stores in the area, so it sounds like a good idea. Okay. Now that we have that arranged, shall we have some tea? It's now that I realize our tea has been sitting idly by all this time, getting no hotter. That's my fault, let me pour that for you. Yuko reaches out with shaking hands, but I intercept her. She looks in no state to be handling hot liquids. Or cooler than hot liquids. It's alright, I've got it. Since you've already made the tea and sandwiches, you've fulfilled your waitress duties, right? I, I guess. Yuko relaxes a little, but still watches eagerly as I share out the assortment. What the hell just- Oh, that's the fireworks. I was like, what the hell? Did someone just get shot? As I am about to bite into the sandwich, a low, loud rumble can be heard, along with a flash of light from outside. Ah, I take it the show has started. Only now, looking outside, I realize that dusk has become- or has come and gone, leaving us in the peak of twilight. Sparking traces or tracers arc upward, ready to explode in the floral shapes of fireworks. Let's go watch. Oh, sorry, Lily. <laughs> Please don't miss the show on my account. From what I've heard, this isn't a bad location to watch them from. With the exception of Lily, we rush to the window of the small tea house to watch the show. The strobe of colored lights plays across Hanako and Yuko's smiling faces. And for a second, I forget to look out the window. In this totally new world, there are a few things that don't change. I think that's why the school makes such a fuss over this festival. It's a chance to show the similarities between everyone. The show is over all too quickly. Fireworks are expensive, even for the most well-funded schools. Shit, we never got any fireworks. High school, middle school, college... Maybe my university could pull some of that shit off, but I don't know. Before we return to our tea and sandwiches, Hanako turns to me. Actually, we, no, no school could pull it off. Fireworks are technically illegal, but of course everyone's going to do them. Because California. Uh, thanks for today. And tomorrow. That's okay. I don't think that I could have faced those crowds either. On days like this, it's more relaxing to spend some time away from everyone, don't you think? 
Yeah. Anyway, we've been delaying this tea for far too long now. Let's get back. Sure. God damn, how can no one like Hanako? She's got that gentle face. She's shy, yes. She's scarred, obviously. But man, I feel like there's a character inside that we can that that needs developed and, and we can do that. We return to the booth and our light meal. And also, don't don't take my message the wrong way, guys, please. This is a wholesome game. That sounded impressive. Bigger than last year's at least. Yeah, it was great. I've never seen them put on such a show. It gets better every year. I'm afraid, however, that during that time, the tea has gotten cold. Oh no, let me make some more. This is my fault. Calm down, Yuko. It's nobody's fault. I take a sip from my cup just to prove the point. This tea isn't too bad. Or er, Yeah, it's not too bad cool anyway. It's like an iced tea. Really? Yes, really. If you add a bit of sugar, it's kind of nice. Are you sure? I'm positive. Now why don't you just sit down and we'll finish this together. Okay. Yuko doesn't seem convinced, but sits down regardless. She carefully measures out about five teaspoons of sugar and adds them to her tea. Uh, I said a bit of sugar. I know, but I like my tea sweet anyway. Yeah, I too enjoy my tea as just a cup of sugar. Curiously, I peer into her cup. As expected, hardly any of the sugar dissolves in the cold liquid. She stirs it twice before upturning the cup and drinking the contents, sugar and all, in a single mouthful. You're right, that's not bad at all. I yeah! I look back to Lily and Hanako, both of them, or both of whom have finished their meal as I witness Yuko's personality in action. Not wanting to hold anyone up, I use her tactic and finish the remainder of my tea in a single swill. Well then, it seems we're all finished. Should we head back now, or do we want seconds? Yuko's expression shows that this is quite clearly not a good idea. I think that it would be best if we got back soon. We do have to get back before cur curfew, after all. Oh, that is a good point. I'll meet you tomorrow, Yuko. I'll be looking forward to it, Lily. Goodbye, everyone. We make our way out of the small tea house and into the dark of the night. Lily and Hanako once again take point, but under the cover of darkness, Hanako seems slightly less stressed than she did on the trip here. We move against the occasional group of people emptying the school grounds, but Hanako seems to lead us along a few minor roads, avoiding the bulk of the crowd. Outside the dorms, the school seems strangely quiet when compared to the noise of the day. Well then, thank you both for today. I think I learned a lot. You're most welcome, but I'm afraid that I really must be going. Today's been a long day. That's right. Lily spent all of today on her feet, and I can imagine that walking outside of the school would be pretty tiring for her. I feel a pang of guilt as I remember that I was probably the only one in the school that got up around 10 this morning. Sure thing. I'll see you both tomorrow. Good night. Good night, Hisao. Night. The girls return to their dorm, and I to mine. Actually, now that I consider it, today, to or t yeah, today tired me out as well. We're getting a white screen, and now we are getting a cutscene. All right. Oh, okay. Well, I I, I can definitely say we're we're on a route now. This is, this, oh shit. Holy fuck, this is animated really well. Is that us? Why do we look like doo doo? Why does she look so perfect? Even with the scars, man. Even with the scars. How have they not made an anime of this? Okay, okay, never mind. We don't really look like doo-doo. They could easily make a great anime with, with these characters. These character designs are so perfect. So they just need they need some funding, that's all. Act two hide and seek. I really gotta run through uh Emmy's route again on this save so I could uh 
so I can get that torn piece of paper or whatever in my main menu to show that, hey, I've accomplished one route. Maybe I'll do that after I do this one, because I don't want to have to run through another route and somewhat pay attention to the choices that you got to make. Because I'm pretty sure there's choices you got to make during the route, right? I want to say at least. But hey, we're in Hanukkah's route. And I know we're a few minutes early, but we'll stop the episode here as I'm really tired. And honestly, it's a good stopping point. Why not? To town to town. I'm not exactly sure what was up with this title in this in this last episode. Or yeah, through this episode. This whole this whole chapter. I don't know why it was called this. It could be maybe it's code for something, and I'm just too stupid to figure it out. Or maybe you gotta be really in the know to figure out what it is. But anyways, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I will uh I will see you on the next one. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe. I'm getting my uh, my bits of my outro mixed up here, but uh, actually, in the last episode, I completely I completely forgot to edit in the outro with the uh, end screen annotation locations. That was the first time I think I've ever had let, had that happen. I'm done with finals. I shouldn't be like stressing out and you know making mistakes like that. So that was really weird. But whatever. I'll see you all next time. Take it easy.